Hey guys, welcome to my legal classes. This is Ganesh Pujari and when it comes to the Transfer of Property Act, one of the key terminology is interest. We discuss about prior interest, life interest, absolute interest, etc. And there are two important interests which are discussed in section number 19 and section number 21. Section number 19 is vested interest and then comes section number 21 which is contingent interest and I am making two independent videos on this particular aspects and here is the first video where I am going to discuss about vested interest. Why to waste time? Let's get into the first slide. One image is better than thousand words. So instead of directly going to the legal language, let us try understand this section with the help of an illustration and this beautiful image. There are three characters in my story. First one is the father, then he got a son and he also got a grandson. Now father got certain amount of properties. He loves his son and would like to transfer all those property to son. But there is an issue. Son got lot of bad habits. Now father is worried if he transfer the property to son, he might misuse the property for the sake of his bad habits. So what does the father do? He transfers the property to his son for life and then to his grandson. That way he gives life interest to son and absolute interest to grandson. But grandson has not yet got the position. He only got interest which is known as vested interest. Now his possession is forwarded for certain number of years but definitely he is having interest over the property which is known as vested interest. Well, I hope you have understood the story. Now I will explain few other factors which are going to be repetitive in my next slides but I am not going to focus them too much there because I am telling them here itself. Because the image is in front of you, it might become easy for you to understand everything here only. Now the first thing that you need to remember is there is transfer of property. Now the father is transferring the property to son for life and then to grandson with absolute interest. So there is transfer of property. Now the grandson who is going to get the property or he is going to get the absolute right over the property once after his father is dead. However, till then he will have vested interest only. Remember that part and he has to wait for the position. That is one another important aspect. And you also need to observe that there is a timeline mentioned which will happen. Now this is not a contingent aspect. This is going to happen. The grandson is going to be like he is going to have because the son is going to die. It is not like son is never going to die. The son is going to die. That way the grandson will going to get the property. That is a sure or must event or certain event. In contingent what happens there may be an event or may not be like for example if X marries Y then he will get the property in contingent interest but X may get married with Y or he may get married with some Z or A or B or C. The opportunities are different there but here in this case the grandson is going to get the property because death of son is a confirmed event which is going to happen with all human beings. That way it is a certain event which is what you need to remember. Now you might be getting one more question. What if the grandson dies before his father dies? Now that's a very interesting question if it is already in your mind. Now if the grandson dies before his father then after the death of his father the property will go to the legal heirs of grandson. Now who can be his legal heirs? It may be his mother or his siblings whosoever. Now that is one another aspect you need to remember. Just because of the death of the person who got vested interest, the property will not die there only. It will be transferred to the legal heirs. That is one another aspect you need to remember. So, so many things are involved. First thing, there is a transfer of property. There is a prior interest created. Remember that point also. Now before the property is going to the actual person who is having vested interest, that is the grandson, there is a prior interest created. That is between the father and the grandson there is a son who is taking the prior interest. So that is one another aspect that you need to remember. I think I have covered a lot of stories and remember this vested interest cannot be created to an unborn person. When we were studying the section 13 
we discussed about unborn person yes of course the property can be transferred to unborn person also with the prior interest but remember the vested interest to that particular unborn person comes to reality only when he borns once he is born then he is getting vested interest over the property if there is any timeline like once he achieves 5 years 10 years or 18 years whatsoever if that timeline is mentioned then immediately after the birth he gets vested interest or there may be a direct transfer immediately after the birth in that case there is no question of vested interest he is getting the absolute interest immediately after the birth so these are the few aspects you need to remember i hope the illustration was very clear now let us try understand the legal language of section 19 which is vested interest what happens here there is a transfer of property where an interest is created in favor of a person now there are two options it may happen without timeline or with timeline let us first try understand the scenario of without timeline imagine an illustration there is one mr a and there is one mr b now a is gifting his certain estate to mr b now b has actually got the estate as a gift but the possession is not yet given to b now he got vested interest on that particular estate but he has not got the possession so he still has the vested interest till the time he is getting the possession that is without timeline then comes with timeline where there are again two opportunities they are in terms specifying that it is to take effect immediately or on the happening of an event which must happen now let us try understand these two lines with the help of an illustration imagine there is one mr a and one mr b now a transfer the property in favor of b for life and then to his unborn son c now if he is mentioning that c will get the property or absolute property at the age of 10 immediately after the birth of c he is getting into vested interest from the age to 0 to 10 he will have the vested interest over the property once he attains the age of 10 he will get the property that is taking effect immediately or the second example is on happening of an event which must happen imagine b already has a son who is of 10 years now if the transfer is made by saying that b will enjoy for life and once c attains the age of 18 then he will get the property in that case what happens from 10 to 18 this event is going to happen if somebody is of 10 years he will definitely go to 18 years also unless he dies and i have already explained what happens if there is a death of mr c now imagine he is going to attain the age of 18 now that event is going to happen and whatever span in between is there there c will have vested interest that is how you need to understand few of the important points that we need to remember is transfer of property happens in this particular case and timeline may be mentioned or may not be mentioned or in certain cases it may be on happening of a certain event which must happen and then while this transfer is done there is a interest created in favor of a person and such vested interest will not defeat by the death of the transferee if the transfer is dead then his legal heirs will get that particular property that is one another important point that we need to remember overall it postpones the enjoyment of the transfer of property and it creates the prior interest before the final transfer or the absolute transfer of the property and accumulation of income arising out of the property till the time of enjoyment arises if that is created and then the transfer of the same interest to another person on the happening of a particular event is also possible now let us discuss three important illustration and one case law the first illustration there are three characters a b and c now a has certain estate which he transferred to b for life and then to c now after the death of b c will get the property and till then he will have vested interest now what if c dies before b the property will go to c's legal heirs after the death of b that is what you need to remember in the case of vested interest in the second illustration again there are three characters husband wife and his son now what happens here husband transfer the property to his wife 
and then to his son at the age of 18 along with the accumulated income. That means if the son is 3 years, the wife is going to enjoy the property for another 15 years. Once the son is attaining the age of 18 years, she has to transfer the property to son along with all the accumulated income of that 15 years. Till then, the son will have vested interest over the property. That is the second illustration. In the third illustration, there are two characters, one Mr. A, the other one B. Now, what does A do? A gives a house to Mr. B. Now, the only one thing that is missing in the gift deed is the date when the ownership will be transferred. Now, till the time the actual transfer happens to B, or till the time the actual possession is given to B, B will have the vested interest over that particular house. That is the illustration number 3. Then comes the case law. The Maharaja Bahadur versus Singh Bel Chan is a very important case law as far as vested interest is concerned. Now what happened here in this case, Maharaja told that he will give a hill as a grant at free of cost if Jains are constructing a temple in that particular hill. There was an agreement made between Maharaja and Jains. However, Jains have not decided to construct the temple at that particular time. And in the meantime, what does Maharaja do? Maharaja sold the property to a third party. After some time, Jains decided to construct the temple and they came to the hill to see that the third party is enjoying the position. So they gone to Privy Council asking for the land. Now Privy Council held that there was no vested interest created in the agreement. That is why the suit got failed. So before concluding the session, let us try understand few important essentials and characteristics. The essentials are there should be postponement of enjoyment. There should be prior interest created. There should be direction for accumulation of income and there can be conditional limitations. These are the few important essentials that we need to remember when it comes to vested interest. Then comes the characteristics. What are the important characteristics? It's a present fixed interest and it's transferable and inheritable and it can be attached and sold in execution. And mere fact that the transferee did not obtain the possession of the property before his death doesn't defeat a vested interest. An unborn person acquires his vested interest only after his birth and directions can be part of it and postponement and creation of prior interest is possible and condition of on attaining particular age is not contingent interest and it is vested interest because it is going to happen. That is what you need to understand. Then comes the section 20 which discusses about vested interest of an unborn person. This section I have already discussed when I was discussing the transfer of benefit to the unborn person while discussing the section 13. However, what happens here, the unborn person will get the vested interest only after his birth. That is very very important aspect you need to remember. And then he might get the position immediately after the birth or maybe after attaining a certain age. Now, if the clause is mentioning that after attaining 10 years, 15 years or 18 years whatsoever, which is the maximum there. So if it is mentioned, then he will get the property only at that particular age and till then he will enjoy the vested interest. And if it is immediately after his birth, that means he will get the position immediately after his birth. That is what you need to understand as far as section 20 is concerned. With that, I am concluding this particular class and see you in my next class on contingent interest. Thank you so much for subscribing my channel. Please like, share and comment my videos. All the very best for whatsoever purpose you are referring my channel and thanks again.